Hi everyone. Welcome to another exciting series of Sin Lab podcast. My name is Uche Namadi and I'll be your host. Today we will be addressing the crisis of antibiotic abuse. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, share and follow Sin Lab Nigeria on YouTube and on Spotify. Today, I am going to be doing an exclusive with the amazing Dr. Folabi Obe. And before we get right to it, let me give you an introduction of our guest by reading his very impressive, intimidating, and powerful profile. It says here that Dr. Folabi Obe is an alumnus of Ladoke Akintola University of Technology, Obomosho, and an award-winning fellow of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria. Dr. Falabi Obe is a result-oriented pathologist with expertise in management of medical diagnostic laboratory, infection prevention and control, management of infectious disease outbreaks, and biological risk management. It is already looking amazing. Dr. Falabi Obe is an executive member of the College of Nigeria Pathologists, a member of the Society for Quality Healthcare in Nigeria, a member of Infection Control African Network, ICANN, member of Clinical Microbiologist and Infectious Diseases Society of Nigeria, member of European Society of Clinical Microbiologists and Infectious Diseases, Biological Safety Association of Nigeria, and others. Can this get more interesting? Dr. Folabi Obi is currently the Chief Medical Officer of SINLAB Nigeria, with the responsibility of leading the medical strategy, supporting and coordinating a sustainable, responsive diagnostic network with the aim of achieving the company's mission. He's a loving husband and father, lover of fun, and a believer in a new Nigeria. This is very powerful, Dr. Afolabiwe. I am Honored to have you here today in this podcast. Oh, well, thank you. I, I was just wondering if you're actually reading about me. Yes, this is you. <laughs> this is all you. <laughs> Only to your full chest. It's, it's, it's all you. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay. So, I'm happy to be here. You're looking, you're looking great. Thank you, sir. You're looking handsome yourself. <laughs> right. Well, thank you. Thank you, sir. So, like I said, we'll be addressing the crisis of antibiotic abuse. So we we'll want to start by understanding antibiotic abuse. So I'd like to ask Dr. Fola Biobe, what constitutes antibiotic abuse in the healthcare system and why is it a pressing issue? Okay, well, um, thank you for the question. Antibiotics and antibiotics abuse and um, why is it a pressing issue? Yes. It's a pressing issue because... All of us know about antibiotics. Yes. And one way or the other, all of us will take antibiotics. Yes. Right. Yes. But the unfortunate thing about us in this part of the world is we take antibiotics with no discretion. Right. So, <laughs> yes. a discretional use of antibiotic consumption is the major thing that leads to antibiotic abuse. And that can be divided into two or three. Maybe I should just... Number one, you're taking antibiotics when antibiotics is not necessary. Yeah. For example, your four or five-year-old boy had a flu and uh, you want to take Ampiclos. That's an abuse. Huh. Right. So you see your auntie had cough and it was, I ah, called you on the phone. Ah, auntie had cough. Oh. And uh, just the guy auntie just told you, oh, two weeks ago, I visited a doctor. He prescribed ciprofloxacin for me. I still have it at home. Since you are meeting after the church service tomorrow, it gives you the ciprofloxacin, you are also taking it. It's antibiotic abuse. Yes. Right. The doctor says use it for four days. You're using it for two days. It's antibiotic abuse. Sure. He says use it for five days and you feel you want to use it for one week. It's antibiotic abuse. Right. The doctor who just feels he just wants to write for writing. So a lot of things like this. And why is it a problem? Because we're meant to take antibiotics when we need it. Right. If we continue to take it the way we're taking it, when we truly now need the antibiotics, it will not be there to answer for us. Yeah. So it's a big problem. Wow. So it's there are different ways you can actually abuse this by shortening the time, yes. lengthening the time, and taking what you are not supposed to take. Taking what you are not supposed <laughs> to take. Yes. Okay. So I'd like to um, dive right in by asking, what are the root causes of this antibiotic abuse? Root cause. I will still say it discretionary use. 
I mean, I think by mentioning the first question, I've also answered the root yes, cause. Right. Yes. The root cause is we are not handling antibiotics the way we should use them. Antibiotics are meant to use for certain reasons. So anytime we use them, not for the reasons they are they meant are made to be for. Used, it's, those are the causes. Okay. And there can be society. And of course, our society is also a major cause of antibiotics abuse. Any chemist, any pharmacist at every corner, at anywhere... Can mix anything for you to Can mix anything for you to and use. In fact, to... people hawk antibiotics around the street, even in don't, the market. Don't get me started on that one. You I know, see that a lot. All those, the those mal- are antibiotics. The malam in my neighborhood has... Sells antibiotics. Yes, you yes. know, your aunties, your brothers, your nephew, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, everybody is a doctor so, when it comes to prescribing antibiotics. Yes, I think it's a problem because it's even easily accessible because of the reasons yes. behind... Now, those are the societal factors. Then there's also the government factor constituting antibiotics abuse. Okay. No control. Our policies are there, but the willpower on the part of the government to enforce this policy. In fact, I can tell you for free, antibiotics are divided into various groups. Some mm. are meant to be reserved antibiotics that are meant to be used in certain conditions. I will surprise you that even those antibiotics, you can get it from a lamb store, is as bad as that. Yes. So all these things pulled together, they constitute antibiotics abuse. And I can tell you for free, it's a major problem. Yes, it I, is I couldn't a agree. Big, it is a big problem. Well, can you help us talk about the consequences? What are the long-term or even the are there immediate consequences for this abuse? And are there long-term consequences? What, what are they? Well, immediate consequences is number one, when you need the antibiotics, the antibiotics will fail you because mm. the bacteria that you carry would have developed resistance to those antibiotics because mm. you have not used them when you are supposed to use, use them, them yeah. or you have used them in a wrong way, either short duration, long duration, or improper dosing. Hmm. So when you need them on the short time, they will not be there. The long time um, burden is that we would now build a community of bacteria that has multi-drug resistance. Wow. Right. It means that you come to the hospital with, say, pneumonia. Ordinarily, by the time you're taking augmenting for three to five days, it should respond. But because you have abused antibiotics in the past, you realize that you stay in the hospital for another two, three weeks or four weeks. Hmm. Right. Long time burden, prolonged hospital stay. Yes. Long time burden, loss of manpower because you are meant to be in the office. You are not able to go to the office. Yes. Your brothers, your sisters are also meant to be in the office. They will come around to come and stay with you in the hospital. Right. And of course, again, you are going to be spending lots of money. Just by abusing Just antibiotics. Just by abusing antibiotics. So it has a ripple effect. Yes. And that's I why I feel this that. topic, it's, um, I think it's just a good time to have this yes, conversation. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. So I, I would also like to ask, how can healthcare providers better identify and address these instances of antibiotic abuse in their practices? Well, how can they? A lot of things that people can do. Number one is antibiotic stewardship. Hmm. Let me break it down and not speak medical jargons. People should take responsibility. Yes. It's very important. On the part of the doctors, prescribe antibiotics only when it is necessary. Yes. Don't I make agree. any patient to force you to prescribe. Educate them properly. Yes. Number two is one of the major things foiling these antibiotics abuse is lack of laboratory support. Hmm. How so? How so? Because you are meant to test. Okay. Whether the antibiotics you are going to use will be will be would be good for that reason. Okay. And so you take the sample to the lab, the lab will test for you, and then they will tell you, oh, it is sensitive, oh, it is resistant. Yeah. Then you are using the right antibiotic. But then there is no laboratory support. So the hospital or the healthcare settings should also make sure that there is quality laboratory support. Yes. And then affordability and accessibility. These are the things that could help the healthcare system, you know, to hmm. fight antibiotic abuse. Wow, this has been very educative. 
we've not even started and it's already sounding like this. Well, it's, it's actually a very, it's, it's actually a it's very, it's a very interesting, interesting topic, topic because really. a lot of us are guilty yes, of this. Yes, a lot this. of us are guilty oh. and of course either directly or indirectly our brothers and sisters, people around us, they use antibiotics. Thank you very much, Dr. Folabi. So to my listeners out there, have you learned anything? Please let me know in the comments. Because for me, I feel like if the doctor has not prescribed, I should I have no business going to buy and take. If they've told me to do it for five days, I have no business doing for lesser time or for more than five days. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow Silab Nigeria on YouTube and Spotify. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.